Good evening and welcome. Tonight we're going to be going over the history and geography of Mali. There's a cat hair on me. I apologize for that. So Mali is located in Western Africa. It's bordered by quite a few countries. It has this big long border with Algeria, this big long border with Mauritania, it borders Senegal, borders Guinea, it borders Côte d'Ivoire, or the Ivory Coast, it borders Burkina Faso, and it borders Niger. So for geography, I'll go north to south to show you its many geographic features, then I'll discuss its history, and then we'll flip through this book and look at some awesome pictures. So as you can see up here, northern Mali is dominated by the Sahara Desert, the world's largest, hottest desert. Nothing but sand as far as the eye can see, right? As you can tell by this map, there is not a lot here. It is pretty barren. It is mostly just sand. There are a couple of little interesting places of note. In particular, this town up here of Taudeni is a salt mining town, and there are no roads to it, as you can see. If you want to visit this town, you have to use a camel or a dune buggy, I suppose, some other method. It's very, very isolated out in the desert. There's a couple of other very small settlements and that's mainly because this northern region is dominated by the nomadic Tuareg people who call this area Azawad, which we'll talk about in its history. There are also some historic places in the north up here. You can see the city of Gao, which is a very ancient old city, and probably the one that you all have heard of, Timbuktu, is located right here. As we move further south, we head into the Sahel region, which, let you see, Sahel. The Sahel is where the Sahara Desert meets the more uh, lush, jungly rainforest region of Central Africa. So it is still dry, it's still hot, but there is a lot more life there, a lot more plants, people can farm, things like that. In particular, this area right here is a big floodplain of the Niger River, which you can see right here. Let's see if we can't follow it. It comes up through here and arches way up here and then comes down over right there. And the Niger River cuts through the capital city of Bamako as well. So this area and also this area over here are major farming areas, mainly cotton and rice and grains. Um, gold is one of the biggest exports in Mali. We'll talk about that in its history as well, as well as salt, like I talked about up there. Um, the Senegal River is what dominates this area over here. Um, but the Niger River is incredibly important to life down here. 90% of the inhabitants of Mali live in this region over here. There's a couple of interesting places over here, um, one of which is not located on this map. It's about right here, and it's the city of Janae, which is another historic city I'll mention early on in its history. It's where you'll find the Great Mosque of Janae, which is like one of the more iconic mosques of West Africa. It's pretty recognizable, the big domes with like the sticks coming out of it. You'll see it in this book. It's a very famous mosque. Very, very beautiful and interesting. Um, we're going to start history in this area over here. Um, this region is traditionally home to the Dogon people. We can see the city of Bandiagara here. The Bandiagara escarpment are a bunch of cliffs and things over here where there's a lot of um, relics of times past that are still around. You can also find the highest point of Mali in this um, 
mountainy area. It's called Hombari Tondo. So I think that's all I want to talk about. Yeah, for geography. So let's get into its history. So like I said, there's a lot of early rock art and things in this area, but also up in the Sahara. And that's because the Sahara Desert did not used to always just be nothing but sand as far as the eye can see. It was actually pretty lush and a lot of people lived there and thrived there. There's some rock art found up in the desert area from about 10,000 BCE. And there's even evidence of farming around 5,000 BCE until the desert and the sand started creeping in and pushed people further away. Except the Tuareg people who've like always been there, always living their nomadic life. But a lot of towns down this area um, were founded. Um, Jene, Geno, that I mentioned over here, it's just called Jene today, but back in those days it was known as Jene, Geno. It was founded by the Soninke people, and it was a major trading center for gold and salt, because like I said, lots of gold in this region, and salt mines as well, which was extensively traded throughout um, this corner of the world and in more northern Africa as well. That industry led to the rise of the Mali Empire, where the country gets its name. It actually comes from the word for hippo, uh, but it changed over time to mean, like, I think it's the place where the king resides. The Mali Empire was founded by a man named Sundiata Keita. Uh, I believe, if I remember my research, the Keita family is, or the Keita clan, I should say say is still around because it's pretty large it was large back then still large now if i remember my research correctly uh, but their capital was in timbuktu up here and timbuktu is a big center of learning um, there are lots of advances in mathematics astronomy um, writing and religion um, of course, Islam was the big up-and-coming religion in this area, so a lot of Islamic scholars would come to Timbuktu and teach, and there's a university that was founded there, the Timbuktu Manuscripts, there'll be a picture of some in here, which is um, ancient books that have been passed down through families. A huge center of learning back in the days, and that was really perpetuated by a king named Mansa Musa who is believed to be the richest person who has ever lived, ever. He converted to Islam, and while he was making his Hajj to Mecca, he just threw gold out to people as he traveled through with his huge, huge entourage of like thousands of people. And uh, he actually devalued the price of gold in Egypt caused like inflation because he just handed out so much gold as he passed through both ways, the way to and from Mecca. He was a pretty iconic figure. I checked out a book to read about him and Sundiata, but I feel like the Sundiata book was too short and the Mansa Musa book was too long and dealt with a lot of um, uh, fiction, <laughs> parts of his life that's not really known about is what it mostly talked about. And, both books are very interesting, but I decided to scrap them. Maybe another day we'll read those, because... Anyway, I wanted a more factual book about Mansa Musa, you know. Anyway. Eventually, the Mali Empire weakened, especially after the reign of Mansa Musa. Eventually, the Mali Empire was absorbed by the Songhai Empire, which I think I'll discuss when we uh, talk about Mauritania. It won't be for a while. And eventually the Songhai Empire was conquered by an invasion from people from Morocco in 1591. And the region just kind of fell into a state of, like, disrepair, like, unimportance to the rest of the world and Africa in general. The only real notable things of this time period were some really devastating famines that happened in the 1680s and a huge one that lasted from 1738 to 1756. It was really devastating. 
Meanwhile, up in Europe, the scramble for Africa occurred in the 1880s and various European powers divided up Africa among themselves and this area fell under France's jurisdiction. In 1905, it became part of French Sudan, which consisted of not just Mali, but a lot of the surrounding territory here. And uh, there, there was an attempt by the French to try to make it more French here, which failed. So they tried to incorporate French aspects into Malian culture, which worked a little better. It's still around today. They still speak French in Mali. Um, but I don't think the integration worked as well as the French had hoped, um, especially after soldiers were conscripted into World War I and various conflicts happening during the 20th century. Eventually, um, independence was becoming a thing, and Mali and Senegal had joined together because they were both part of French Sudan. Um, but in June 20th of 1960, they separated, becoming their own things. And on September 22nd, the country became known as the Republic of Mali. And it did fairly okay in its first few years of independence until there was a coup in 1968, led by a man named Moussa Traoré. He created a, a one-party, very socialist state, which, um, like many socialist countries around the world at this time, started off pretty strong and then started to fizzle after a few decades, right? Um, there was also another big, huge famine and a drought from 1968 to 1974, which led to a lot of unrest in the country and disapproval of how the government handled it. In 1991, there was a huge student protest, which is known as the March Revolution. Over a period of like about a week or so, this massive revolution took place that eventually had Trare removed by the end of it and a more democratic multi-party state was established, which again, did what it could. The main problem was that the South was doing its thing, right? Meanwhile, we have the Tuareg people up here, which is very removed from everything that's happening down in this area, and they felt like they didn't want to be attached to that. So in 2012, there was a Tuareg rebellion it led to them declaring independence for Azawad and um, some pretty horrific clashes and attacks during that. They also um, received some aid from Al-Qaeda, which wound up uh, fighting them back, basically, where they essentially betrayed the Tuareg and turned against them. Big mistake there. France eventually came in, sending in military to try to calm the tension there, and uh, French military has pretty much stayed in Mali ever since. Meanwhile, down in the south, in about 2015, there was some ethnic conflict between the Dogon and the Mande Bambara-speaking peoples against the Fula or Fulani peoples. Um, there were groups that formed their own militias that would, like, patrol the streets and attack the Fula people indiscriminately. And that led to a lot of, as you can imagine, some pretty horrific tension. Again, France got involved trying to stop it. Uh, but it's something that was never really officially resolved. It's still kind of an ongoing thing. Not as bad as it was, but still pretty much there. Then in 2018... They held an election, which was pretty questionable about, you know, if it was fraudulent or not. Um, that led to a coup in 2020, and then in 2021, there was a coup of that new government. Um, so, pretty much, as of now, that new government is in transition, trying to figure itself out. Not doing a great job in early 2022, which is filming this in early 2022, but earlier than when I'm recording. They actually closed the borders of Mali completely. So, um, that's pretty much where we are today. It's a very iffy to see 
where Molly goes from here. We do not know what's going to happen next. Um, when this book came out, it's a very recent book, but the more recent coup had happened when it came out, but it does discuss the um, coup in 2020, which, like I said, was really precipitated by the election and that presidency, but also by the pandemic, of course. But regardless, we're going to look at some fantastic pictures of Mali because it's quite an interesting country. Look at that picture. That's beautiful. We've got some splashy fun there, probably in the Niger River. And we've got some rice farmers there. That's a great photo, too. Now, look at this. This is a Dogon village. I know when you just glance at this picture, it just looks like a desert. But if you look close enough, you can see all the little huts down there. It's really beautiful. And this is the picture from the 2020 coup. These are people you can see there pretty excited about it. And this is like, um, I suppose more of that Sahel region where it's, there's life, it's green and grassy, but it's still pretty arid and rocky, right? We've got some big sandstorms blowing about up in the desert and big old sand dunes, right? Pretty sand. And here's another good picture of the Sahel, kind of describing what that region is like. There's trees, there's green, there's grass, but still very dry and barren in a way. This is the Tambora Escarpment. Big rocky cliffs. It's really beautiful. There's more pictures later on. And here is the Niger River. Very beautiful. What else do we have? Here is Bamako, the capital city. You can see there's a big square here. And let me look a little closer. Yeah, it looks like there's a couple of um, trading going on. You can imagine on market day, this place is like hopping, right? And here is Mopti, um, which is right there in that, you know, Niger River Delta Basin area. And this is in Janae. Very ancient looking buildings. And I think you can see, yep, there's the Great Mosque back there. But there's a better picture of it later. So here is some ancient structures built into the Pandigar Escarpment. It says they were the Tilem people before the Dogon arrived. So I was kind of wrong about that, but pretty remarkable as well. Here is Timbuktu, we can see in the distance there, in this old drawing. And here are some ancient manuscripts from Timbuktu. Very ancient books. Very, very delicate. Really, um, I actually read a National Geographic History article about the Mali manuscripts and how during the um, 2012 um, like rebellion, civil war, um, how they had to be, like, protected and saved because the, um, like, Al-Qaeda terrorists were destroying them if they found them. Here's a statue for soldiers who fought in World War I. And here is a celebration in 1960 for independence. Look at all the people lined up. And this is after, um, the like protests and everything. Um, oh, never mind. This is between the Tuareg and Mali government, but it says that these are guns that were collected so they could be burned after the conflict was over. Got some national pride here wearing colors of the flag. The Malian government building in Bamako. Here is their seal where you can see the great mosque on there, some bows and arrows, and people, uh, one foi, people, one goal, one faith, it says. And here's a guy casting his foot. Some of the money, they use the West African CFA franc, like a lot of other countries in this area. There's a wonderful face there, and she's harvesting some cotton. And here's a little farm. 
very, very neatly um, tidy and precise there. The Manantali Dam on the Bafing River, which is over in, let me show you, it's over here at the Bafing River, this very lush area over here. And here's some salt being mined. It says this is, oh, this is going to a refinery in Bamako, but th these are all big slabs of salt. And this person here is panning for gold, which is a very arduous method of finding gold. And this is in Mopti. This is a river port. It's a little barren, but that's how their industry is done. So here's another picture of the Bandigar escarpment. Isn't that beautiful? And then look at the village down there. Very, very scenic, isn't it? So here's a pile of wood being burned. It says to make charcoal. And some dried up river beds, all cracked, barren. Look at this little friend here. It says this is a little bee eater. Very, very colorful and sweet. It's got some nice eyeshadow. And here's a gold miner coming out of the mine. And here's another wonderful face. Isn't this a fantastic outfit? And look. She's got a baby on her back. You can see some little toes. <laughs> so these are um, some Pembara cultural people. Um, Pembara is more of the language that's spoken. So there's a lot of groups that speak Pembara. It is the most widely spoken language in Mali after French. Um, but it talks up here about the Mande people, the Malinke people. Um, yeah. 33% total population. There's the Bozo people as well, live near Chine. The Peo, which is the Malin word for the Fulani. And over here we see a Tuareg person who wear very characteristic um, shawls and head wraps and they always wear blue. That's like their signature color. And here are some Dogon masks. The Dogon people are one of those African cultures that have absolutely incredible masks. Really, really remarkable. Getting some water there in the village. And these people here have some millets they're carrying. Here's a happy family over here. And it says this is a wedding happening. Everyone coming together to celebrate. Working very hard in school. She knows the answer. <laughs> Let's see. Here are some researchers to study COVID-19 in Bamako. And here's a picture of hospital. So here is the Great Mosque of Chine. Very iconic building. So it is made out of mud, as you can see. They've got a sound system to call to prayer. And there's these big old sticks here sticking out. And um, those are a structural thing. It's also when after the rainy season's over, people can climb those to help put more mud and clay back on there. They rebuild it pretty much every year. Isn't that fascinating? It's a huge, huge building. And lots of buildings from that time period, like 1200s to about the 15-ish hundreds, were built in this style. And here's a, not the mosque I believe from the picture, but a typical mosque, time for prayer. And look at this, this is a Dogon method of divination. It looks very complicated. French lessons. Let's see, talking about past tense up here, we've got, oh, it's verbs, huh? Jouer, to play, rester, to rest, tomber, to fall. I'm not sure what she's writing there, it's covered up by her hand. Souffler, to burn, acheter, to buy. And teaching you how to conjugate. Je joue, to joue, il elle, joue. Nous jouons, vous jouez. So on and so forth. No one likes verb conjugation. It's never fun. <laughs> so it says that they're um, learning Pembara, apparently. 
your writing in it, I suppose. And to these two guys, this talks about how um, greetings in Mali are very long and drawn out and loud and um, can last for a while. <laughs> it's very friendly greeting. So it looks like here that they're doing what I was telling you about, how they repair the, the clay, adobe, what have you, on the buildings there. They do it every year after the rainy season. And he's got some, making some patterns in the fabric. This is like Tuareg blue from the looks of it. Playing some music. That looks like fun. They've got all different instruments they can play. What else do we have? Some gold jewelry for sale, because gold is still a pretty major industry for Mali. And some Dogon crafts. We've got lots of sculptures, like tablets, and this is a headrest. So you can sleep on that and not ruin your elaborate hairstyle. It doesn't look very comfortable though. Playing some soccer, because of course that's the big major sport in this part of the world, as in many parts of the world. Look at that setting. It's a player game. That's a great little soccer pitch, huh? These guys are playing some foosball. And, oh, look at this Dogon mask. Absolutely incredible, right? So neat. I I mean, masks in any culture are just so cool because they're so unique. Like, it feels like every culture around the world has some interesting kind of, like, traditional mask. Well, not every culture, but every culture that has masks as part of their traditions and festivals and things all have such uniquely different masks that are so expressive and so interesting. I'm really into it. We've got a rowing contest on the river, on the Niger. And these are some puppets at the festival on the Niger. Really cool. I bet you can tell some cool stories with those. And here's some more masks. These are Bobo masks. So, so, it, oh, I like this one. You can see the handlers too. I like that one the best. <laughs> so detailed and interesting, right? Got some rice here. Very important crop. There's some tea being poured. Because it's one of those cultures that has very intricate, like, tea pouring. And tea drinking is a big part of, like, I want to say daily life. But, like, it's almost like a little ritual. Like, lots of different cultures have tea rituals throughout the day, right? We've got some food here. We've got some meat and peanuts. Oh, that looks delicious some pule yasa. Looks like the theme here is meat and rice, or what is this? Chicken, beef, or lamb? It says it can be. It's, I mean, you can't go wrong with chicken and rice, right? <laughs> That's a good combination. Here's a really great map of Mali, which, if I, where did my pencil go? Right here. I can show you that Janae is located right there. We've got the mountains here. There's Boritondo. And yeah, this map is really good for little things, but I really like the first map I showed you because it, you can see the landscape, you can see the desert, and the, the greener areas, and the rivers, and everything a lot easier. And then, oh hey rooster, over here this is where Molly's located in the world, right in this part of West Africa, right in the middle. No coastline. So, Rooster's telling us it's time to go. It's time to go to sleep and relax. So, thank you so much for watching. I do hope that you found this video relaxing and educational. And I hope that you have a very good, 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 good night. Or good morning.